Sarah from the Little Elven Cake Company and today I'm going to be showing you the benefits of using this brand new sugar paste. I'll be preparing it, rolling it and covering a dummy and showing you how well it works. Okay, so here I have a two and a half kilo block of sugar paste and I'm going to start to knead it to prepare it for rolling which is the best way to get it nice and smooth so that you can work with it easily. So I'll do it in sections just because it's easier than trying to knead the whole block and I can feel right away that it's lovely and smooth. It's not going to take me long at all to get it, to get it in the right shape for rolling. So kneading the sugar paste is important because it activates the gums which makes it easier to work with. So as you can see while I've been kneading it, it hasn't stuck to the table at all. Now normally when rolling sugar paste you'll dust the surface with icing sugar or corn flour but I can tell I'm only going to need a little just to add a little bit of slip to the surface so it doesn't stick while I roll it out. So I've been rolling this for a few minutes now and it feels good, it feels really robust, there's no cracking, it's nice and smooth and I'm going to be able to get a nice thin sugar paste which is what you want for a professional looking cake. I had a fall on New Year's Day which resulted in a bit of a wrist injury. I, it's sugar paste has always been a difficulty for me since I fell um, and I know straight away if I start to get that pain but it feels lovely and genuinely it is going to roll really nice and thin. It really actually is lovely. So it's rolled beautifully, you can see right away it's not stuck and I only used a very very small amount of corn flour. It's going to lift off beautifully very very minimal cracking on the edge of the nun um, and it feels great I can't wait to get it on the cake so there's lots of ways to lift your sugar paste to apply it to your dummy or your cake lots of people do use the rolling pins I prefer to just lift it straight off the, the table and put it straight on the cake so I'm going to get my arms under, gently lift and then slide my dummy over. The first step is to smooth it on top just so that you know that it's stuck and from there we'll start to work sides down. So you can see right away it's not cracked at all, there's no stress on the sugar paste, it's stretched out and there was more than enough. I used less than two and a half kilos and there's going to be lots left over as well. And you can see the sides are lovely and smooth and now I'm going to start to work around the edges a little bit more, remove the excess and then we'll get on to sharp edges. So it's been so easy to use this. It's soft, it's smooth and it's just coming together just how I'd want it. So as you can see, lots left over and even though it's been sitting out, I've rolled it, I've kneaded it, it's, it's perfect to use right away. There's no drying, there's no cracking. And that's been about 15 minutes on the table, I think. So I'm going to set this to the side and after I finish with this, I'm going to be using it to create a cute little teddy bear. So the basis of a beautiful cake design is a perfect base. So when you're smoothing out the sides and the top, that's what you're really looking for. Everything to be neat, no cracks, a good finish and the fondant coming down to the edge perfectly and just for it to look neat. 
So normally when you cover a dummy or a cake, especially this size, air bubbles are a very normal thing. You just have a little pin and you'd smooth it out. However, I I don't need that today because there are there are none. Um, and that's that's very nice. That just shows how, how perfectly it's gone onto the cake. So one of the main trends for a professional looking cake now is the sharp edge. And that's what I'm gonna do now. I use an edger and a smoother. There's lots of different techniques to doing this. Some people do the upside down, some people use flexi smoothers, but these are my trusty tools and that's what I've, I've always worked with. So I'm gonna start by smoothing the side again and then just gently pinching together. And as I slowly work round, you'll see the sharp edge start to form. So, I've done probably three quarters of the sharp edge and it's only taken a few minutes. It's, it's coming together perfectly. The, again, there's no cracking. I've been working with the sugar paste for probably 20 minutes now and there's still time to get a perfect sharp edge on this cake. So I'm not having to rush. It's lovely, um, it, it just feels perfect. You know, normally you have to kind of like get to know a new product before you can, before you can work with it so well, but I, I, I would be absolutely happy with this. So another trend at the moment is definitely tall cakes. So now I'm gonna demonstrate how I would cover a tall 10 inch that is 8 inches in height. So like I did with the other, I'm going to slide my hands under, lift the fondant straight onto the cake and then put it in position. It is taller, so I'm going to work a little bit faster, smoothing out the top and making sure those edges are stuck down nicely. So as you can see, it's worked really well. It's such a good, strong sugar paste. Anything, anything less strong would be cracking, it would be pulling, and I would never have been able to cover such a tall, large cake with such ease. So normally if I was gonna cover a dummy or a cake this tall, I would use the wraparound method, which would be to roll the sugar paste, cut the side piece and then add a top. So I was a little bit nervous when I seen the size of this dummy, however, I feel a lot more confident and this is the first time I've tried it. It's, it's just gone on exactly as I would have wanted and it feels great. So having a sugar paste that you can use where you know you can cover a tall cake like this is going to save so much time. You're not having to worry about hiding the difficult areas at the back of the cake. You're not going to be spending loads and loads of time trying to smooth out because it's worked the first time. And I think it's a really nice feeling when you know you can trust your sugar paste to work for you. So between cake friends, we're always discussing what tools we use, how we get around certain problems, how to master your fear of when a cake's going to go well or not, or when you're trying something new. And having the base down always comes up as the most important process of the cake. When you've got that blank, perfect canvas to work with, everything else will go well. This type of sugar paste is essential for achieving that finish. So I'm really impressed with how fast I've been able to prepare that amount of sugar paste, cover the cake, get the sharp edge and get that flawless finish on the cake. 
So I started off with five kilos of sugar paste and I've covered a four inch high 12 inch and a double height 10 inch, which is a lot of dummy or cake. And this is how much I've got left. I'm just gonna weigh it. And it's 1.6 kilos, which is a lot to have left to be getting on with. So you can see how far the sugar paste goes. So now I'm going to cover a square dummy, which I know, like myself, many, many people dread. But I'm going to trust the sugar paste and we'll see how we go. So once again, it hasn't stuck. It's smooth. I've gone for quite a nice thin roll and I'm going to lift gently straight on the cake. So as I said, I, I avoid doing square cakes at all costs, but I really think this has gone well. And I'm feeling confident about trying square cakes again. So as you can see, I've done my super tall 10 inch, my 12 inch and the square dummy, and I still have more than enough left to do teddies and rabbits. Okay, so with the a small amount of the remaining sugar paste, I'm going to be making one of these cute little teddies. And often, when you make when you're modelling, you'll use Tyrol's powder, mix it with the sugar paste so that it firms up a little bit. But I've used this now to cover the dummies, and I can tell it's going to be perfect. To use just as it is and that's a nice thing when you don't need to do anything to your sugar paste and you can just get straight on with the modeling so i'm gonna make little legs just turning up the side so you get that nice kind of teddy paw shape and although the sugar paste is not sticking to my hands it's so lovely and pliable and malleable that it's just pushing together really nicely so I don't actually need a lot of the glue that I've got out and I've coloured some pink here and that's just for the nose and the, and the little details on the ears. So I get the arms on next, so then I'm just rolling it. I'm not using any tools for this. Well, by the time you had finished with all of the cakes, trimmed the edges and so on, more than likely it would have dried out by then. Whereas this has been sitting out throughout and I've been using what I need and it's still it's still in perfect condition to use, just you know, just like I've just taken it out of the packet. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue to my lolly stick. Push that in so that the head has some support. So with modelling paste or florist paste, it starts to dry out very, very fast so that you so that it holds its shape. However, that sometimes makes it quite difficult to work with and you don't get nice, smooth looking models. It can be cracked and it can start to dry out very fast, but I can still manipulate this however I like because it's still lovely and soft so I'm going to add a little bit of glue here and again there's not going to be any issue with pushing the head down because it's not fully dried now I'm going to roll a little bit out and as you can see I haven't had to dust my hands or anything with corn flour or ice and sugar, I've been able to work 
with the sugar piece just as it is. It's set, it's not soft, it's not moving, it's the shape that I would like it to be. Just add two little eyes. And as a finishing touch, a little teddy plant.